Hey guys, it's Stephen Gates here, and as promised, today we're going to walk through and talk about a couple other success stories uh, of electricians who were able to improve um, and advance their careers by advancing their skills and learning how to program PLCs. So, one of the stories... Uh, is about one of my students uh, who went through my PLC training academy. So I love to share this one. Um, and he is still kind of getting started in his new role as a PLC programmer. He's been doing it for about a year now. And the other story is more of an inspirational story of something you could uh, aspire to because um, it's pretty impressive. And it's of someone who has been doing PLCs and automation for quite a while. Um, and he's actually started to kind of make a name for himself uh, around the world through his um, projects and the skills that he's developed. And uh, so, first person I'm going to talk about is Nathan Parks. So, um, Nathan is actually one of my coworkers. So I'll just say that up front. Um, we have a unique relationship because I've worked with him for several years. Um, but, and we, we basically do the same thing now. He's an electrician, um, but he now basically does the same thing with me as me with programming and automation and startups and troubleshooting, all that stuff. So Nathan went to tech school several years ago uh, to become an electrician or electrical technician. Uh, it was kind of an electrical tech uh, program that he went through. And then right after he graduated, he went to work as an electrician uh, for the company that I work for. So Nathan did really good work as an electrician. I can say that from my own experience working with him. He was always ready to take on a challenge, and he loved to learn new things. Um, which, just a quick side note, those two qualities there um, will get you far. Um, being ready to accept a challenge, whatever your job is, um, and then being eager to learn more. So if you don't have those um, two qualities, um, you're not going to do well as a PLC programmer. You're not going to advance in probably any field. So... Those are two really important things you can work on uh, for free. So uh, just a quick side note, work on your um, skills of taking on challenges, uh, not shying away from them, and uh, learning new things when the opportunity presents itself. Okay, since you're watching this, I kind of assume you're already um, that kind of person learning new things is something you enjoy you probably wouldn't be here otherwise so um, glad to see that and uh, that will serve you well so back to Nathan's story uh, over time Nathan worked with me quite a bit um, as I said he was really good at his job as an electrician so I actually tried to get him quite a bit to help me on projects uh, because I knew I could count on him to get the job done and do it quickly um, so he helped me with installing and testing new PLC systems or, um, even upgrading existing ones. He usually would do the wiring and hardware installation and I would do the programming. Um, but since he showed such great initiative and interest in PLCs, I started giving him PLC tasks, excuse me, um, such as checking out IO by forcing outputs or verifying inputs, um, which is a great way to kind of get familiar with the software and, and get comfortable with the way PLCs work. Um, and so I will say I kind of encouraged him to, um, to get into PLCs um, just from a, uh, the standpoint of I could see he had the drive. I could see he had uh, the ability to learn it, and um, so I wanted to I wanted to encourage him to pursue that. So um, he did uh, actually. 
I didn't push him towards this, um, but he did enroll in my PLC Training Academy, which was great. Um, and he had done some PLCs in his tech school, um, but he enrolled in this so he could refresh his memory and improve upon the PLC class that he took at PLC at the I'm sorry at the tech school. And uh, next thing I knew, he was taking over programming tasks for me. And last summer, he even took over a big startup that I had been working on um, because my wife was getting close to having our baby last summer. And I couldn't travel to the site. Um, so he took over and he did an awesome job at it. And he learned a ton. Um, and now he he talks about that that was a great experience for him so um, now he does PLC programming all the time um, he still does some of his old electrician role stuff but he's mostly moved into the programming role and uh, he's helped our team develop new programming standards and he's um, done a lot of cool things he's helping us improve our automation department if you will we're a small company so we don't really have departments but um, it's been really cool to see so I talked to him recently uh, I thought I would throw this in here just so I'm not painting a picture that's not realistic and he told me he has not received a significant pay raise since starting his new role um, but he did receive a raise shortly before that so I think he he wanted to stick with that before pushing for a new um, a new salary um, but I'm confident that before too long uh, he will definitely be making more money um, and not to mention he now has a very marketable skill should be uh, decide to move on to another company somewhere uh, he has the skill that he can take with him and be very marketable so really cool story um, Here's the picture, him just talking about uh, the course that he took, Become a Common PLC Programmer from MyPLCTraining.com. It not only gave me some confidence in programming, but it helped me get a job doing programming. So there you go. Uh, it helped him actually get the job. Um, and that makes the days not drag on like they used to. So he's told me this, that there's a lot he he loves the variety and the challenges uh, that he gets now as a programmer um, rather than doing a lot of the monotonous manual tasks that he was doing as an electrician so um, that is what I want for you um, and I hope that's inspiring to you so the next story I want to talk about here is about uh, Derek Stickle and uh, somehow I got connected to Derek on LinkedIn and quickly noticed that he was someone to pay attention to. Um, he would post about PLC automation projects that he was working on. And I was really amazed at his level of expertise with automation because he was sharing pictures and talking about different projects in different industries with different equipment, drives and PLCs and HMIs and um all this stuff uh, that some of it I was familiar with, some of it I was definitely not. So I was really impressed. Um, and also in the past few months, um, he has been sharing his current project that he's been working on on LinkedIn, which is adding a can line to a brewery uh, with incredibly complex and fast automation uh, the project was originally projected to take five years, but he and his company were hired to do it in five months, which is insane. And here's a screenshot from Derek uh, on LinkedIn where he announced that they hit the deadline. So I got to kind of see the progression, and I was you know, wondering if they would make it, but sure enough... Today was a huge day. We were tasked with doing five years and five months with five insane deadlines, but we just officially met the last one. Several processors, HMIs, and approximately 150 PowerFlex drives in three months. Everyone is stressed and exhausted, but we all worked together and made it happen. The whole project 
this whole project is the type that takes a month to get your body and mind right again. No regrets at all. So he's going to have some recovery to do after that uh, for sure. Um, so I'm not uh, suggesting that you try to kill yourself um, doing this stuff. But I did uh, want to introduce you to Derek. Um, he works incredibly hard, and some of the things he pulls off, I mean, they just make you tired reading them. Uh, but the point is what you can accomplish. So I want to read a couple more things from Derek here. Um, he says, he's showing this picture of this plant that's pretty cool. Um, it's a lot of motors. I was told as a kid I was nothing and would be nothing. I didn't accept that. By 25, I was a master electrician and fabricator. Okay, so he started out as an electrician. Uh, then I got into programming. My life goal is to be world-renowned as one of the best in my field. I have 40 now. I lost my family for a few years in my obsession. I don't recommend that. Uh, but I think I have done it, and I am an influencer. I help colleges and our youth, and if you want an insane amount of impossible done by an insane deadline, I'm the guy you call. This is my life work. So... Again, I don't recommend uh, you trying to kill yourself and you're uh, jeopardizing your family life to achieve these goals. But um, this guy has achieved, uh, or I'm sorry, achieved a lot in his career. Um, so I asked Derek uh, a month ago or so um, to tell me a little bit about how he got started. Here's a brief introduction to... Uh, his career history. I went straight to work out of school in factory positions. Nothing great at all. Worked a lot of hours, but still didn't make much and struggled. Okay, I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that. There was a local electrical contractor that did work at one of the places I worked at. I stayed on, uh, I think it's supposed to stay with him for about six months, sending resumes, letters, emails, and then he finally hired me. Um, Oh, I stayed on him, so he was he was pushing for, for getting hired. I didn't really have any experience at all. No experience, even as an electrician. Um, for that reason, I started as a grunt apprentice, maybe in 2001. <clears throat> Excuse me. Somewhere around that time, I even took a pay cut for the position. I worked my way up fairly quick, became a journeyman level, site supervisor, then master level. After that, I moved into mining and programming. From there, I've worked in basically every industry. <clears throat> Excuse me. So as you can see, um, he's had quite the journey. Um, so he didn't even start out as an electrician, and he had to work hard to get into that. Um, so if somebody like that can make it to the point where they're now um basically world-renowned. He says he's working towards that. I can tell you that um, he is world-renowned. I, I know Siemens has been reaching out to him, and I think they even sent him to their special automation conference in Germany. Um, and people, on at least on LinkedIn, who are into automation and PLCs and stuff, most of them have heard of this guy. So uh, that's kind of the other side of the story where you can see how far um, you can take it. And this guy does not have an engineering degree. Uh, that's the point I'm trying to communicate. Me, I do have an engineering degree. And so some people think that kind of takes away from my credibility to talk to electricians. Um, and that's fine if you think that. Uh, I don't blame you. But... Um, I got into this and specifically trying to help electricians because I could see that the jump from electrician to PLC programmer is not that far and that it's very doable if you have the drive and you're motivated to learn um, and take on challenges. So that's all for now. Uh, I hope that inspires you and encourages you that this can be done and uh, gives you something to shoot for with Nathan. Um, like I said, that, that's very doable what he's done. Um, 
end. I know that you can do it too if you have, uh, if you'll just take the initiative to start learning PLCs, take on challenges, and uh, look for those opportunities. And Derek is an example of what you can do if you really want to push the limits and uh, and how far you can take it with the skill, which is, is just incredibly valuable um, in the world today as automation is increasing more and more. So that's all. Thanks for watching, guys. And uh, we'll talk to you soon with more information uh, about how to become a PLC programmer.